Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey everybody, and welcome to Ask an Engineer. It's me, Lady Ada, with me, Mr. Lady Ada on camera control, broadcasting live from the Adafruit factory here in New York City. That's where we're at. We actually just did a little bit of our, our daily walk-ins, walking around, just checking everything out. Uh, all good here at the Adafruit factory, where we manufacture, design, test, ship, video, document, code, release, package, and ship. I think I said that twice. All of the electronic goodies that you know and love. We even got some discount codes for those who want to buy from the Adafruit shop. And more, we got an hour of goodies for you. Right. Kick it off with what's on tonight's show, Mr. Lady. On Lady-Ada. tonight's show, the code is uh, brooches. Brooches. Yeah. I'd like to broach off. the topic with That's you. That's right. Temper set off on the Adafruit store all the way up to 11.59 p.m. tonight. Probably running into the discount a little later because folks like that. So yes. that's what it is. Whatever's in stock, yes. 10% off. Later. Talk about our eight for live series of shows, including show and tell. We got some news around the web and more time travel. Look around at makers, hackers, artists, and engineers, and more. Help wanted some jobs from the Adafruit Jobs Board, jobs.adafruit.com. We got some made in New York City factory footage and more. We got a couple 3D printing videos. We got Ion MPI brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. We got new products, and we're going to answer your questions tonight. We do that at the end of the show. Adafruit.it/discord. Join all 31,000 of us, 24-7, all the time. Yes. All that and more on, you guessed it, dun, dun, dun. Ask an Engineer. Okay, so I'm going to do just a quick update because uh, I've been telling you know this uh, story for 18 months. Um, get out of here, COVID. Um, Bye. Yeah, so. Off with you. Yeah, so Adafruit is 100% vaccinated. Yes, I'm vaccinated. Yeah. You're so, vaccinated. And yeah. everyone at Adafruit's vaccine. Everyone is. And uh, if you work at a company and you're trying to figure this out, if you're, in a, uh, if you're running a business, um, the thing that we found that works is uh, give people all the time they need to uh, chat with their healthcare professional, do pay time off for vaccination, of course, um, give everyone all the information, uh, be available. Um, I took a few folks to go. Um, and uh, I think it's one of those things where if you've respected the dignity of, dignity of individuals the entire time, when things like this come up, you have equity that you've built in each other. And you could do something like, hey, uh, we can get through this if we all decide to do something together. And it looks like our team did. Uh, didn't know what was gonna happen when we decided to say, okay, like let's put a date on the calendar, let's figure out what happens. And that's it. So uh, that's one crisis that is uh, maybe avoided. Uh, there's still supply chain stuff, uh, power rationing, uh, potential international conflict with uh, different countries. But besides that, uh, we got this one thing checked off. So Vaccinated. we'll see how it goes. And uh, our team is still doing uh, masks indoors in the common areas. Mm -hmm. And then we'll start to figure out what uh, makes sense. We also rolled out the HEROES Act here at Adafruit because it's now part of New York. And so we'll see. Um, that's where we're at right now. We're looking forward to uh, a fantastic and prosperous 2022. Hopefully this is the thing that pushes it over the edge. So that's our update. I'll give more information as, as uh, the weeks and months go by. Okay, um, so we talked about the discount code, but folks can get free stuff, Lady Ada, when mm -hmm. they put stuff in their cart. What can they get? Okay, we're doing three freebies right now. $99 or more, you get our uh, classic freebie, a uh, circuit, sorry, a um, Permaproto, our um, PCB that's like white with blue and red and black silk screen. It looks just like a half-size breadboard. It's great for making your projects permanent on the Permaproto. One forty-nine or more, you get a Stemma QT board. We've added a couple different sensors that we do have in stock, removed some that we don't. There's about like 10 or 20 different um, sensors that you could get. Uh, if you make an account, you'll get a different one each time. $199 or more, you get free UPS ground shipping in the continental United States. Um, and usually we have $299 circuit playground, but we're out of circuit playgrounds right now. I don't know if you've heard about it, but there's a shipping delay and part shortage. However, we think we'll be able to get more circuit playgrounds in within a couple weeks. All right. Um, and then just a little bit of a note here. So uh, 
This wasn't our decision. We were alerted from USPS that as of right now, unless something has changed, they still have an updated site, is there's international service disruptions because of COVID. So there's two countries that uh, weren't on this list before and they are now. So we don't ship postal right now to New Zealand or Australia. And I thought I zoomed in on this one. Anyways, it's New Zealand and Australia and I thought I, I had this, but anyways. anyways. Yeah, so um, we'll see what happens. We still do DHL though, so don't worry about it. all the resellers can get things via DHL, but postal right now, apparently, uh, they're not doing, but from what I understand, lockdown ended in Australia, so we shall see. We have a bunch of live shows. Uh, we did um, show and tell. Thank you, Noam and Pedro, for hosting. Um, it, of course, like when when they're hosting, it's like Maker All Star Night. I know this so, looks so cool. Just like okay, there's Jay. They're the just Maker watching Pong people. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, it was cool. It was super good. Uh, check yeah. it out. Um, it's live on YouTube. It's not. It's saved onto YouStream. You can yeah. stream it and pretend it's live. So um, we also did a little bit of an update. Um, new graphics. Yeah, we have new graphics for Death of Lady Ada. So if you want to check it out, um, we still do the show in two parts. Lady yeah. Ada, what was part one? Okay, part one was I showed off the Pi Basic uh, project. I also showed off um, some camera hacking I'm doing. Um, I, we did get the OV5640 um, camera modules working with um, CircuitPython, so that's great. And I got some modules that have um, like a case over them and they have autofocus mode. And I was like, ooh, autofocus, that sounds really cool. There's actually a little motor inside. Um, but it's the cameras are not working and I don't know why. Uh, if somebody knows, if somebody's used one of these and they know why the 2.8 volt line is suddenly uh, shorted uh, when I use it in like the classic uh, camera breakout, uh, do let me know. Okay. And then uh, we also do from the desk of Lady A to the Great Search. And a little more, what is the great search this week? Okay, we did classic 555 timers. Um, Colin did a video on 555 timers, and um, uh, we wanted to also, uh, you know, show how to find a, a classic component. Um, so how to find dip 555s, including, uh, we also went through some history, some projects Phil and I both did with 555s, and also um, new updates to the chip. It, you know, You no longer have to get these, like, slow and uh, power hungry and high voltage uh, chips. You can now get uh, 555s that run off of a AAA battery and consume uh, less than a, uh, like 10 or 20 microamps of current. Okay, and then every Tuesday we do JP's product pick of the week. That's where we broadcast live from inside the product page and there's a discount right there. Yes. Um, so let's play this week's product pick. Take it away, JP. Product pick of the week this week is the push button power switch breakout. This is an analog latching power switch that allows you to cut power or turn on power to your project at the push of a button. My favorite feature and one of the reasons I wanted to show this is this kill switch. It says there's a fourth kill pin which you can use to turn off the load uh, or keep it off even if the button is pressed and this uh, kill switch is a a uh, little secret sauce for having projects that need to be energy efficient. So you have a project with a battery, you want to be able to press it, have it do something, and then have it turn itself off until the next time you come by. You don't have to screw around with any sort of low power uh, watchdog timers and things like that. You can just have the thing after some task has been completed or after some amount of time, uh, the microcontroller can essentially cut its own power, which is pretty cool. The push button power breakout switch. Okay. Thank you, JP. Yeah, and I wanted to show this, because uh, we're talking about 555 timers. So this is from Evil Mad Scientist. I got this a yes, long time ago. Yes, they made this. Yeah, and um, it's a little footstool or like Also whatever. good for cats. If you have a cat yeah. and wants to sit on something. And then this is our puppet, Hans. And Hans is one of the uh, puppets on the named Circuit Playground the series. And uh, we took a break from all of our um, puppet shows because yeah. puppetry requires a lot of us to be in Very really close small together. spaces and stuff. Breathing. But, <laughs> but we're going to be able to do that again soon. We just yeah. have to uh, start scheduling up again. But uh, we can do more now. And I hope, um, I know I did my little uh, talk at the beginning about how we're vaccinated here at Adafruit. But I hope people look at it as when you, once you get vaccinated, you can do more stuff. Yes. And that's what we're looking forward have to. Have fun again. Yeah. So, anyhow. Thank you for that interlude. Well, I kind of feel like if you're going to talk about 555 timers and you have this stuff, you got to show it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so next up, let's uh, talk about John Park show. John Park is doing a show tomorrow. Tune into that. 
And uh, there's also a Parsec. I'm going to skip those this week because we got a lot of stuff to do in the show. Friday, deep dive with Scott, 2 p.m. Um, I did tell Scott that we're dressing up here on uh, Friday the 29th yeah. at Adafruit. And I'm hoping uh, Scott will dress up for his show. Okay. But I don't know. Now that I'm saying it, maybe maybe folks will be he's like, gonna, hey. he's going to dress up as a synopsis USB core because he's currently battling a USB synopsis core. Oh, man, that was a costume I was going to dress I up as. I know. I know everybody wants to dress up as All that. All right, so time travel. Okay. Time travel. Look in the world around you. And there's stuff that's happening. So first up, um, Adafruit is doing stuff with the Wonder Workshop. There is this Wonder Cup. Uh, we're helping out with the competition and more. Check out our website. Check out their website. It's the Wonder League Robotics Competition. Um, and uh, we're trying to do stuff like this. Or we had a little bit of time. So our team was able to uh, work with their team. And if you're interested in their robotics contest and more, do check it out. Um, next up, Adabox, a little Adabox notice. So uh, we have like two openings left on Adabox. And I'll say this. If you're concerned about getting your Adabox before Halloween or before, let's just say Christmas, um, maybe cancel your subscription because th you never know um, because of what's happening now and global this, this shipping. This year is actually worse than last year, which yeah. is pretty impressive. I thought yeah. last year it's like we had you know no shipping for like four or five months, um, but actually it's it's actually getting much worse now. Um, again, where we have stuff that is stuck in ports for like a month or in airports for a couple of weeks, um, yeah. even when we kind of expedite the shipping. So. Um, Ada Box, you know, we will ship four this year, um, but what this year okay. is might might yeah. drift into January. We think it'll be okay. So the lunar year. Yeah. So we'll <laughs> let everyone know. But um, if this is the worst thing that's ever going to happen to you in the world in your entire life, um, just pause the subscription for a bit um, because we're going to do everything we possibly can. But a lot of things are outside of our control. Next up, Collins Love Notes. We do Collins Love Notes every single Monday, Tuesday. Thursday, Friday, and I'm going to play three this week because like, there was three I really liked, and I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to build time into the show. I'm going to play these. So take it away, Colin. Solid core or stranded wire. Heavy gauge solid core wire is generally preferred for high power applications, like the wiring in your walls. But for most, the biggest factor to consider is simple flexibility. Like, say, for breadboarding, solid's a natural choice. Stranded just doesn't get along with breadboard clips. While solid stays, you know, solid, and it'll retain the shape you bend it into, which is great for keeping the wire close to the board and nicely routed. Stranded's great for anything that flexes frequently, distributing mechanical stress across many pieces, as opposed to quickly stressing out solid core's single strand. No matter what kind you're using, consider adding strain relief to any flexing connection. And when you use a pair of wire strippers, make sure you reference the right side for your wire type, or your strippers may turn into cutters. NeoPixels are digitally controlled RGB LEDs available in a variety of form factors from individual pixels to full matrices, and most commonly a flex PCB strip. Color and brightness of each NeoPixel is controlled via a timing-specific single-wire data protocol, which can be sent by most microcontroller boards, but timing requirements will pose a challenge for Raspberry Pi and other single-board computers. To get an idea of how much current you'll need for basic usage, multiply your number of pixels by 20 milliamps. If you plan to get wild and drive all pixels at full brightness, multiply by 60 milliamps instead. NeoPixels powered by 5 volts require data to be sent at 5 volts as well. So if you're using a 3 volt microcontroller, add a level shifter in between for translation. For all things NeoPixel, be sure to check out the excellent NeoPixel Uber guide on the Adafruit learning system. Whippersnapper is a new feature of Adafruit I.O. that lets you turn a Wi-Fi capable microcontroller board into an Internet of Things device without writing any code. Program your board with the Whippersnapper firmware. For many boards, you can do so by simply dragging and dropping a file. Enter your network credentials and Adafruit I.O. username and key in the secrets.json file. Don't worry, they'll stay private. Log into your Adafruit I.O. account and click Whippersnapper on the top bar. Reset your newly programmed board. It should automatically appear in the Adafruit I.O. window. Name and add the board to I.O. Then connect one of the supported hardware input, output, or sensor components. 
use the new component button to add it to Whippersnapper and choose your settings. And that's it. You can now turn on an LED from across the internet or get a notification when that brake beam sensor is tripped or keep an online record of light levels in your fridge or get a notification. Okay, cool. And then one thing, um, I was talking about this uh, Australian, New Zealand thing. Yeah. Uh, that they can't deliver mail to postal mail to Australia and New Zealand this time. Um, someone had asked, it's like, oh, like, what if uh, the post office got better? And what are there things that they can do? So I remembered, I'm just like, oh, you know, that's a good idea. There's probably a lot of things the post office can do. Um, and so a long time ago, I wrote an article. And uh, it's still on make. Um, it's from 2000 and. 12? Yeah, so about, the last time we had a postal system about crisis. About ten, 10 years ago? Okay, let me clear all these. Okay, now i got to set up cookies. Okay, um, so if you go to the Make site and, or just go on Google and search for uh, USPS Tyrone Magazine, um, it'll come up. So I wrote this thing a long time ago, and the, the highlights were like, here's some things that the post office could do. Now, 10 years ago, this was kind of futuristic. So it was uh, a sensor network because we see those around which, all the time which now. Which ironically is now kind of what people are doing with LoRa networks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, a uh, street, a uh, postal service street view service. So um, all these companies that keep putting uh, cameras on top of cars to yeah. do mapping. Well, the post office goes everywhere all the time. Pretty much. You just rent, you just rent space on top of the postal truck, and you put your camera there uh, for your company that does this. Um, Postal uh, Service Cloud, 10 years ago this was like crazy and futuristic because there's a lot of people that uh, they just need like storage of like mail and stuff. And now yeah. the Postal Service, they have a service that can scan mail. Yeah. And so that would be kind of neat. Um, AdSense, um, this was um, this was a bad idea. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, just send all of our mail to Google yeah. and they could put ads on it. Sure. Um, and then the Postal Service could do Kickstarter fulfillment because, kicks, you know, if people had Kickstarters like 10 years ago. Everybody had one. Uh, is like that was the fulfillment piece could be uh, postal. Um, postal Service 3D printing where you would uh, send something off to the post office to get 3D printed. It would print out. And then um, special... Uh, grants for small businesses. So this was really close to first data yeah, so they did, they did. I think or, they have started banking with postal, which is a, know, in a couple of cities, which is a common in many countries. Yeah. Usually mm -hmm. the postal system is also your like Yeah, in Japan, fund. the postal, the, the, the post office is a different type of experience. You do a lot yeah. of things there. So anyways, um, you know, check this out because uh, I feel like there is a lot of these things that I wish I had time to. I actually got a chance to talk to uh not the postmaster general, but it was uh, higher up there after this article came out, and uh, that person's not there anymore. So I don't know what I don't know what happened. So anyhow, let's uh, go to help wanted. So uh, we're doing our part. Jobs to are put, available. To put America back to work. Okay. Um, so there's two ones that are new. Enrollment director, this is a blue stamp engineering, and Oshawa's hiring a community coordinator. It's Oshawa month, open source hardware month, yeah. October. O is for October and open. Yeah, so check it out, uh, jobs.adafruit.com. Post your skills if you're looking for something, or if you're a company looking for top talent, apply uh, your time there effectively uh, to get applications effectively. We will review each one, and we um, don't let scams or uh, spam by. Next up. It's Python on Hardware time. Blinka, Blinka, Blinka. Yeah. Blinka, Blinka, So blinka. this week, i uh, going to start off with yeah. some news. So Python has now become the number one programming language. This is... Um, oh, some index? Yeah, it's, it's an index. Yeah, know. it's an index. Well, we've covered this a yeah. long time. So they've been doing it well, long enough for people to agree that this is a resource. So it um, surpassed Java and, and C. And now well, it what's is interesting is actually more that Java and C dropped. I mean, Python has gone up, but you can see the popularity. I mean, I, interesting. More people are more people are writing different languages. It used to be just like look, look. Obviously, Java and C were like super dominating, and yeah. now it's like a bunch of languages are kind of coming up. JavaScript, and uh, PHP, and um, and Python, and SQL. Yeah. I don't know if I'd call SQL a language, but I guess it is. So um, this is interesting for us because I feel like, uh, you know, that that quote 
from Wayne Gretzky that I think Steve Jobs later said is like, you got to skate where the puck is. So we thought that scripting languages were going to come to microcontrollers, and then we found other people who thought the same thing, and then we started to work on things like CircuitPython. So this is good news. If you're learning Python, you are an electronics expert, sort of already. Um, and I guess the only downside is it might be too easy to do electronics. What will you do with all that spare time instead of uh, being frustrated and angry? Um, the Moo editor is out. There's a beta. It's 1106 uh, or beta 6. It has multi-language support and a bunch of new features. Do check it out. Uh, we hit 3,000 closed pull requests in CircuitPython core. We get a lot of PRs and we merge them. We only yeah, have right. like a dozen open PRs at any one time. Um, not all of those PRs are actually merged. I think like 27 yeah. or 2,800 of them are. Sometimes we close them if they, you know, people end up sort of closing and reopening different ones. Um, people submit boards through a PR, uh, which is great. We have support for, you know, hundreds of different uh, boards in CircuitPython. And that's one of our, I think one of our big strengths is that we'll build all the boards for you in every language. Yeah. Um, we also have been doing merges. Today we started the merge with 117 from MicroPython upstream. So we're That's right. part of seven was, okay, we did the big catch up and now every time there's a new MicroPython release, we uh, keep up with them. Um, we fix bugs and do upstream uh, PRs. We also get everything from upstream to make sure that we're up to date with the language um, consistency. I think there's a couple of F-string things and uh, some async things that were merged in 117. Okay, uh, if you're into handheld gaming, there's a stage game library for CircuitPython was supported to the yes, Primaroni and Pico this system. Yes, new Pico system is so cool. Yep, if you uh, think Python needs to be sped up, no problem. The uh, creator of Python will gladly talk about this on a podcast. Hair. Yeah, um, and then uh, just check out the rest of the odds and ends. We have a lot of stuff going on. Um, in the newsletter every single week. Uh, I've been following this. Professor John uh, Gallagher has uh, a whole series of videos and resources and more on CircuitPython. He's a professor, teaches computer science in school and more. At the and, Superior Boston University. Oh. and uh, Boston Area University. And uh, check this yeah. out because there's a lot of things like choosing board to run CircuitPython. A lot of stuff that uh, we come at it for people that are purchasing the hardware and then students come out in a different way and I think this is a, is a good resource. So um, next up, the thing that I usually try to do is find the thing that I wanna uh, show each week, kind of a highlight, and I think this week I'm gonna show a video. We got BASIC running on a Pi Portal via CircuitPython. Yes. So that's cool, so I'm gonna play this video. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Hey, you just sent me a link that you saw on Hackaday about a uh, basic interpreter written in Python. So you can actually kind of play around with basic in inter interpreters in Python, which is also interpreted, so it's kind of meta. Uh, this is uh, the code running on a Pi portal. The interpreter is in pure CPython and because CircuitPython is a subset of CPython, it just works, which is super neat. Um, you can see here I loaded the vectorial uh, basic sketch and I'm running it. I can also run another sketch. So let me, or basic file. Let's see, load, and then I think it's rock, paper, scissors, dot basic, and then run. Okay, what do you think, scissors? Yeah. Okay, cool, it's draw. a draw. Um, so you can check out the files are on, uh, you know, PyBasic from which PL, and yeah, you just drag the files over, and in your code.c file, you uh, import me. And that's Python on Hardware News this week. Thank you, Blinka. All right. Next up. We are an open source hardware company. To prove it, we have 2,558 guides. It's on the learning system, Ada Fruits, I guess, uh, biggest, biggest resource. Uh, and you can get to that at learn.adafruit.com. Um, this I is just, we don't stop. We didn't stop at 2,000 or 1,000 no, or 2,500. No. We're just... No, we're just going to keep going. Keep going. Yeah, so that's uh, just some of the guides this week. Yeah, we've um, got a turtle tracker guide. Yeah, we've got, oh, so sorry. we're going to do this in two parts tonight because we have a whole whippersnapper section. So let's do the non-whippersnapper ones okay. and then we'll do whippersnapper ones. Okay, Dylan rocked out this great Oshawa project display uh, with MagTag guide. So if you have a MagTag and you want it to display a different and unique Oshawa project every day or hour or whatever. Uh, it'll grab the name description and it'll show a QR code. It's got that nice grayscale in the background um, with the uh, open hardware logo. Um, so it's a great way to celebrate open hardware month. Maybe your stuff will pop up. Uh, we've also got a uh, update to um, Jepler's guide on 
capturing uh, camera images because we've added OV5640 support, which is very exciting. We've also got a guide on the iLights uh, LED glasses and uh, driver board. So if you picked up one of these and you're like, I want to put it together, I want to write some code, I want some examples, I want to use Bluetooth, um, check out the guide on that. Uh, and we wrote a guide for folks who want to contribute code or fixes to the learning system repo. All of the code that we write that's on the learning system repo is in a GitHub repo. Uh, that's because we want to be able to, um, first off, have all of our code in one place. We can use continuous integration to test and make sure that um, it's linted and it still compiles properly to compilation tests. Um, we can generate binaries, but also if we ever have to update all of our code in a learning system, um, we can grep through it instead of trying to like actually search for each guide. So all of our code has been moved to one repo, which is, it's a massive repo, um, but it's, it's a really great place to just kind of like poke around if you're interested in all the projects that we've published. It's, it's all in one place. Okay, and then uh, welcome to Whippersnapper. This is uh, our, our no-code Adafruit.io thing. Let's uh, look at some turtles. I wanted to show some of the iterations of this that we were thinking about. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of settled on this. So, uh, Lady Although Adafruit. I kind of like the skateboarding one, too. It's like, hey, maybe, maybe, uncle yeah. dude. So maybe you can briefly describe what Whippersnapper is. Do check out our video, but we have uh, uh, three guides. So what, what is Whippersnapper, Lady Ada? Whippersnapper is a no-code IoT system where you install a pre-built firmware onto one of our Wi-Fi boards, and we give you the firmware file, and you drag and drop it, you know, like a, like a disk drive, so you don't have to even open an IDE. You can use a Chromebook or whatever. And then um, it'll automatically connect to Adafruit.io using your Wi-Fi password and uh, your IO username, which you program into the file, and it's all kind of done automatically for you, or by editing a text file with um, your credentials. It's, it's securely stored on your device. And then you can control sensors and inputs and devices that are connected to your hardware without actually writing code. So a lot of people just want to have a Wi-Fi device that measures temperature and humidity and light and sends it to Adafruit I.O. for logging. It's a very simple project, it's very common, but a lot of people get like hung up, they have to download the IDE and they have to get the ESP board support package. It's and, like, like co-pilot for there's IoT. There's an incompatibility. Yeah. This is like, no, 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 you, if, if it's a board that we have defined, we have like a half a dozen so far and we're adding more, you just drag the file over and within the web server, the website, Adafruit IO, yeah. you can define what sensors are connected to what pins, um, and then what you want to do with that data, how often you want to capture it. So you have like support for you know about a dozen different components um, and sensors and about a dozen different boards. Yeah. Experts like it because uh, they're jaded and damaged and they just want to like quickly do a project like, oh, I just want to know if my garage door is open. Oh, I just want to know if the basement's flooding. And we don't do that thing where the device and, creates an access point and then yeah. you have to connect to the access point. I hate that and, shit. It's not there. We make sure that you never have to like switch your access point Wi-Fi or like whatever. And beginners like stuff. it because they just want to do a project like, is my basement flooding or is my garage door open? So yeah. we have... Uh, Two guides this week. There's a no-code Whippersnapper IoT uh, power switch outlet, and then track a turtle with uh, Whippersnapper. Yes. Yeah, and here's a quick little turtle video. So the turtle video um, is just figuring out is the turtle moving every once in a while, and just throwing it up yeah, on the Yeah, using a PIR to, sensor yeah. to measure so here's turtle a, activity. Yeah. So um, you could Keep use turtle. you could use other pets, uh, and then this is how easy it is, and you know with the we try to do one minute videos to keep the attention span uh, respected. But if you look at how fast this goes, um, it can be just a matter of minutes for you to do something like this. So you can have an idea like, oh, I just wish I knew the following about something. So we want to do air quality, we want to do um, water and leaks because uh, there's a lot of melting yeah. going on. And uh, we'll see how it goes. And then you could then look at the data and figure out when the turtle's moving around a lot. Yeah, and this Most is- Most active and, turtle and days. This is great for, you have young kids and they're like, I just want to get some data about my pet. Yeah. Or like the classroom animal. Yeah. And like what, what's happening? And it's like, you can't tell people, okay, I have to install like Arduino IDE. You have to install a board support package. They might even be using a Chromebook where all that stuff is, is basically impossible. Yeah. How can we do it so that people, even if they only have mobile phones or tablets, 
Yeah, one I want to do Still is do IoT um, projects. because we can, you know, the hardware that we do is is high value but low cost, and this is very easy and it's a free service. I want to do one where um, in low income housing you can have something that uh, starts to log how often the radiator is turned on in the winter, because there's things that do that, but they're expensive, they're hard, and then you're kind of committed to it. Um, but I thought that would be a good one too. So, anyways, that's Whippersnapper. Um, I think I'm going to slice off this video as just like a little standalone for everybody. And uh, more ahead, check it out, adafruit.io. It's open to everyone right now, and it's free. Next up, I'm in New York City factory footage. Take it away, factory. And here's some stickers that uh, Dano got from Emily, and we put this on things that um, are dangerous, so folks yes. know. <laughs> Watch out. You a big wet meat sack? Yeah. Yes, you are. You're slightly salty. And it wouldn't be New York City factory footage unless there was some type of time lapse on our window. This is, as you guessed it, Disney is a building. These are the cranes waking up in the morning. Let me stretch in. Okay. 3D printing. We have a couple videos from Knowing Pedro. Uh, first one is going to be our LED glasses, and the next one is a Squid Game thing. Because everyone is watching Squid Game. Well, I'm wearing, game. A, wearing a laughing Squid shirt, but that's just coincidence. It's all Squid all the time. Sometimes, all squid. Sometimes turtles. Squid, Squid, Squid. Hey, what's up, folks? In this video, we're checking out Adafruit's new LED glasses. These awesome new specs are powered by the LED driver board that's got lots of built-in goodies. With the accelerometer, you can make motion reactive projects like these fun googly eyes. With the PDM microphone, you can make audio reactive projects like this spectrum visualizer. You can wirelessly change the color of the LEDs using the Bluefruit app for your mobile device. You can also type out text and send it over Bluetooth to change up the scrolling message. The LED driver board features the NRF52840, which has native USB, so it can work with either CircuitPython or Arduino. The panel has 116 RGB LEDs that form a grid for scrolling text and two LED rings that make this into a unique arrangement. A series of slits run across the PCB, which allows you to see right through them so they won't block your vision when wearing them. I think this is really important, especially if you want to do stuff while wearing them out. They come in four different designs that are sent out randomly, so you'll get the wonder of not knowing which one you'll get. With CircuitPython support, you have access to all the great libraries for making all sorts of projects. You can check out the demo code and get inspired to change it up or write your own using the libraries for CircuitPython. Check out the learn guide on the Adafruit Learning System to quickly get up and running. You can download the ready to go UF2 file from the guide and use the reset button to get into the bootloader mode. Then just drag and drop the file onto the USB drive to automatically flash the firmware. It's a really quick and easy way to get code running without having to install and set up an IDE. 
You can 3D print your own set of frames and attach it to the PCBs with hardware. The LED glasses driver board is secured to the frame with M2 screws and nuts. The LED panel is connected with the Stemma QT cable so there's no need to solder any wires. The hinges in the two arms are attached to the frame with long screws and a set of hex nuts. With these built-in nose pads, you can wear them more comfortably. For powering, you can use a USB battery bank for long-lasting portability and ease of use. We hope you're inspired to check these out and start brainstorming how these could work in your next project. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe for more projects from Adafruit. All right, and don't forget every single Wednesday you can hang out with Yomi and Pedro at 11 a.m. Eastern time for 3D Hangouts. Learn how to make all this stuff. Why wouldn't you? All right, next up, let's go to INMPI. Yes. INMPI. Today's INMPI is brought to you by DigiKey and the letter C and the letter K. Yes, this is C and K. They make switches. Uh, we actually use a lot of their switches and buttons in our electronics, and so I was excited to see them show up on digikey.com slash new because I like to always feature uh, new and different suppliers. So this week, we're featuring the C&K Illuminated LED Backlit Square Switches. Check them out. These are really good-looking switches. So they are um, illuminated. They have their switches, of course. Um, you can be SPDT or DPDT. I'll show both. Um, and then the top part is you see that kind of white translucent acrylic. Um, they have red and green LEDs in the, the back of the switch that you can control separately. And then the top cap can even be removed so you can uh, put um, like a, a gel or like a custom logo or marker or anything so you can have like backlit text or logos. Um, so this is the KLS uh, series. And they come in a couple different configurations. I think there's like six different options, three cap styles, uh, SPDT or DPDT. Uh, you can get gold or silver contacts. There's a big, big combo of different um, setups. Uh, you know, I, the thing that they say, like the typical applications, this is where I see them. AV systems, um, you know, whenever you want to have like indicators to turn on or off different settings on an AV system. Uh, folks love to use illuminated switches. Um, these are nice and durable. You want good, reliable switches. Vending machines, you can, you can have it lit up, give some feedback um, when they press the button. Uh, kiosks, network equipment. So, you know, the, the consumer and industrial equipment, these are both good for. Um, they're very clicky. Okay, so um, the bottom, you can see on the left, there is the KLS-12, that's the SPDT type. You can see there's uh, one set of switches um, on the right side of the bottom PCB, common, normally open, normally closed. And then uh, the KLS-22, which is on the right side of the screen, uh, is DPDT. It has two switches, um, both with a common, both with a normally open, both with a normally closed. So you can get any of these in any kind of combo. Okay, uh, next up, the cap. So the cap is kind of the most noticeable, I mean, other than, of course, you know, the, the contacts. Um, the cap is very noticeably different. So this is the large square concave. And there's also the square flat and um, the square concave. And if you can't quite see the difference, um, I'll show all three of them on the overhead uh, as well. Uh, next up, 
you know, Digikey stocks three different versions, but if you need a you know, particular combo, like for example, they only have red and green LED, you know, the, the two different LEDs um, built in, but you could have, you know, green and blue or red and blue if you wanted, um, or it looks like even they have an RGB version. Uh, they're custom, you're gonna have to, of course, uh, contact uh, CNK or Digikey and have them custom order it for you. But if you're getting a couple thousand switches, I'm sure they'll do, um, they'll do it for you and, and match the price as well. Um, and then the cap color, they only have the transparent one again, but if you wanted a different cap color, I guess you could have it be black or silver. Available it's on Digikey, of course, yeah. It's in stock. So um, let's go to the overhead, because I want to show, they're, they're, it's, it's a switch, there's not a lot going on, but I do want to show the differences. Okay, so this is the square cap. Um, Oh, there's also, um, in addition to the cap sizes and um, the different, you know, this is uh, only one switch. This is SPDT. Um, there's also both momentary and latching. This is a, a latching type. Uh, so you can see this is a square type. Um, there is a little thing back here. I can, I can try to crack open the, the cap, although. Crack an oven. I didn't want to do it before the show because I was afraid I would, I would scratch it. No, do it here. Do it live. Okay. That's cool. So, yeah, Good you work. can remove it, and then you can even... Oh, this is a little diffuser. You can see the little LED board underneath. Ah. You put the diffuser on top, and then you can put something in between the cap and the diffuser. Okay, so this is the... the and also show the LED, because this one actually showed up quite nicely. Okay. So, um, yellow, because it's both colors mixed. Uh, let's turn on the red LED. Red. And then turn on the green LED. Green. And then both yellow. I mean, it's yellowish. Um, the red is really nice. The green is really nice. It does mix, but really, you, you know, the, the yellow, the, the green is kind of yellowish. Um, so I can tell the difference, but it's, it's hard to see from the overhead. Okay, so uh, regardless, oh, sorry. So this is the square cap. Um, then there is the um, concave cap. So you see this one, the cap kind of comes over. And this one is definitely way better if you want to have some text inside. It goes all the way to the border of the um, switch body. So it's nice and large. This is also uh, on off, not momentary, I think. Yeah, this is the only momentary one I got. So the, this big one, this is the large cap. Um, so it definitely extends beyond. Uh, you still only get the center area illuminated, but I don't know if you want to have like a nice bezeled area. Um, the switch cap will do uh, the job. And uh, this one is uh, momentary. You see, very clicky, very nice and clicky. Uh, and then this version uh, is SPDT, and then this is what it looks like when it's DPDT. So they all have the same um, bottom pinout, but the caps may vary, and, and whether they're momentary or latching may vary. So those are the three. I kind of got like a, a mix and match of the three different caps and uh, switch types and functions. Okay, and uh, the DigiKey uh, product ID is there I picked and one. Then the short there, URL. There's six different ones, but I yeah. pick one, um, but there's a series of them, so you, know, you can always uh, grab one of the other ones. They're all in stock. And we have a one minute video from them that we're gonna play. Take it away. Expanding on CNK's Switch IQ with a focus on innovation and quality, Today, we'd like to highlight the PLP16 and KLS series of illuminated push-button switches. These two series of push-button switches are designed to meet the industrial market requirements for both haptic and sound with a clear click feedback to allow for sharp and accurate control, and are offered in both momentary or locking versions. To give a wider variety of possible applications, both series also offer SPDT, single pole double throw, or DPDT, double pole double throw options. All KLS push-button switches are illuminated, while the PLP16 offers both illuminated and non-illuminated options. In addition to these similarities, the KLS series are all square-capped, on which they can have a custom logo etched or printed. They are also all through-hole PCB mounted and are designed for consumer and commercial electronics like control panels, vending machines, professional AV systems, and instrumentation. On the other hand, the PLP16 series are panel mounted with an industry standard 16 millimeter round panel. And that's this week's Eye on MPI. Yay. Eye on MPI. All right, before we go to new products, let's do the code. Purchase. Purchase.
Brooches. 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 Uh, let's do this. Ready? Okay. All right. So first up, we have a couple revisions. We have a couple revisions. Okay. First up, Open MV Cam. This is like the H7 R2. We carry the R1. R1 is not available due to a part shortage. But they did have some R2s. They sent us over R2s. Um, the R2s have changed the camera. It's now, I think, an MT camera instead of like an OV camera. It's a little bit higher quality uh, camera module. Otherwise, the same circuit and chip layout, everything is the same. Um, software is the same because it auto detects which camera you have connected. Um, prices went up slightly, but otherwise, it works great as an uh, OpenMV H7 cam. So go for it. Just be aware it uh, uses a slightly different camera sensor. It's a higher quality one, though. Next up, another revision. Okay, the Ultimate GPS has been revised. If you remember, uh, for the last year or so, we've been struggling with, or a little bit more in the year, the company that made the GPS modules that uh, we've used for, for almost a decade now uh, stopped making them. Um, but we found an alternative, uh, another company which makes a pin-compatible, pretty much software-compatible um, chip uh, and, and with antenna um, GPS module is available. Um, so we now manufacture it with that. The only real difference is instead of like the NMEA sen sentences starting with GP RMC, they now stand start with GN RMC, I think. There's a couple small changes, but uh, basically we can't get the old ones. And so this is what we got. The quality is the same. The performance is the same. Um, all the functionalities that we've used are the same. Um, in fact, I think some of the people at the new company are even from the old company, they kind of left and decided to like you know, keep this product alive. Uh, so we're glad to keep the ultimate GPS going. It's our favorite GPS unit, and uh, we're just going to keep yeah. making this GPS. We're here forever. Next up. It's Will Ferrell time. Yeah, JP made it? a little uh, or is it a little graphic that made it look like Will Ferrell on this. Yeah. Wire ferrules. Um, these wire ferrules. Ferrules. Uh, these are kind of you know look. They're a little bit obscure, but they're still pretty handy. Um, just a lot of focus. So you get I bought their first album before everyone heard of them. Yes, they're a little obscure, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, hold on. It opens this way. So you get different sizes, and each one of these is a little uh, plastic nub, and it's got a uh, metal bit. And actually, the metal bit is what you crimp. So you put a wire into here, and the wire actually should... Oh, this one's a little bit too small. Hold on. Let me grab a gray one. Okay, yeah. So the wire actually goes into um, the metal bit, and then you crimp it with your crimping pliers um, to make it nice and flat. You squish it, and now you've got a wire with like it. Just it's kind of like those things that you, you know you have on the end of your um, shoelaces, the aglets. I think I don't know what they're called, but little things that just make it a little easier for you to like thread your um, your shoelaces if you have shoelaces. It's basically like that, but for wires. If you're going to be uh, using them in terminal blocks or, um, you know, attaching them in some way where, you know, you don't want them, to, especially uh, stranded core wires, you don't want the stranded cores to, like, fray and, and break off or something. Um, these ferrules are, are quite nice. They're a little luxury. They're used often in automotive and robotics, but they're, you know, look, it's a handy little kit. You get some of every single size from, like, mega huge all the way to, like, oh, it's so tiny. That's the official size. Okay. Next up, uh, we've got... This is a cable. Uh, it's a flex cable that goes specifically from a Raspberry Pi Zero or Zero W to a standard Raspberry Pi CSI camera. Um, we have a couple different cables, but we didn't have a long one. And a lot of people actually wanted a really long one. So we're like, okay, we'll go, we'll go get one for you. Um, it's just a flex cable. It works just like other cables. One side goes into the Pi Zero, one goes into the camera. This won't work with a non-Pi Zero, like a Pi 3 or Pi 2 or Pi 4, those, those are different cables that we have. Uh, the Pi 0 has a special connector you see on the left there. It's a little high de higher density. Um, that's what's used on the Pi 0, so that's what you would use this for. Okay. The stars of the show tonight, we're going to do two. The first one is the LED glasses, and then we have a, a final thing. So oh, yes. let's, uh, let's start off with topic. this. Okay. So we've got the starter kit and the glasses kit for the LED glasses. So we've had the LED glasses panel on the driver, and then people are probably like, hey, so how do I actually wear this? Well, you needed a pair of glasses that we designed it for and we now have the kit in the store that you would attach the LED panel and driver to and it like works quite nicely as a uh, mechanical 
um, substrate <laughs> for the circuitry. And the reason we did this is it's very, very hard to make circuit boards that are comfortable and wearable. It's a lot easier to get a, you know, two or three dollar um, plastic fashion glasses uh, that don't have lenses and then you strap your circuit board to them um, and then you have this, you know, comfortable and very sturdy and like well hinged uh, glasses and then, you know, you can attach any kind of circuitry you want um, and not worry because it's not your fancy glasses. So let's, um, I can show on the overhead how they're attached. Oh yeah? Yeah, because I think the photo, okay. So you can sort of see that these are plastic lenses and so they also have the little like nose protecto thing, which is, which is very nice. Um, and they're big and chunky, which is great because they, you know, we designed the circuit board to fit over them. You can't tell that there are glasses underneath because the PCB hides um, the glasses. And of course the glasses have no lenses, um, but there are, they are like very nicely built. They're very sturdy, but not too expensive. And they have nice uh, thick arms too. And so you can uh, attach the, um, driver to the side. I just use, I think, uh, double-sided foam tape or double-sided sticky tape. Yeah. But you can also um, zip tie them and to the side. We're, we're, you know, you can put in your own lipo, but because this goes on humans, we just did yeah. alkalines. So because it's on your face, <laughs> yeah. basically when, when stuff's on your face, I was like, you know what, if you want to use a lipo, you can enable the lipo battery, but the kit comes with AAA batteries and AAA battery holder with a little belt clip, an extendo, and honestly, I think that's like the safest thing because uh, I know the overhead. So um, the, the computer. So you know, you've got your glasses, and then you've got this battery case, and then you know I just clip this to the back of my hoodie or my shirt. Uh, but you can also tie it to your belt. And it's AA batteries, or sorry, it's AAA batteries. They're not very heavy. Um, they're not very big um, or bulky, and uh, there's no risk of them getting punctured if you're like out, you know, dancing or partying or like a biting somebody because you're a vampire and you want to wear these glasses for some reason, even though you should, probably should be hiding if you're a vampire. Um, I don't know, vampire things. And then uh, if you, yeah, again, if you, if you really, really want lipo batteries. Also another thing is oftentimes when I'm wearing stuff like this, I'm at like Burning Man or a party or out at like um, New York City, like Halloween parade. Um, I need to have a, an extra set of batteries with me. AAA batteries are pretty easy to carry. Um, swapping out a lipo is a pain. Yeah. Okay, and uh, continuing on our stars of the show tonight, here it is. This is our star of the show tonight. Besides you, Lady Ada, our customers, our community, all the folks here in the chat, our team at Adafruit. Here it is, Mark and this outs. is why the code was brooches tonight. Brooches. Okay, this is a project from, um, this is Kitty's, uh, sorry, Kitty Flowers by uh, Art by Physicist. Art by Physicist is the name of the company. Uh, and Kitty is the person who made these flowers. These are kind of neat. They're these beautiful flower-shaped PCBs with RGB LEDs on the front. I think they're NeoPixels. And then on the back, um, you've got a, let me see what ship this is. Whoa, it's buzzing. Because it's too far away, maybe. Hold on. It's like, oh no, I got disconnected from my friend. Okay, uh, on the back is a um, Atmega uh, 30, uh, 328 um, and it looks like you can program it over uh, USB-C here it's got like I'm sure some maybe some USB system uh, going on so you can program it acts uh, as no USB to serial converter there's a buzzer um, there's a little clip so you can clip this on there's an accelerometer oh it's so tiny and there's a uh, Bluetooth radio um, so and then you can even see here it says pair and link oh I didn't see let's see let's see if you can oh yeah, they're linked. So when you have two of them together, uh, they will pair and then they will, um, n you know, know that they're near each other. And when I think they're far apart, one notices and can like alert the other. Oh, and yeah. um, you can do like other fun projects where- Here, give me one. All right, I'm here. I'll say I didn't I'm actually here. try this. I'm here. And then should I go away? Maybe. It still says link. I mean, it's gonna work from kind of far away. Okay, fine. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go near. Yeah. I'm gonna go far. Okay, bye. Far. It still says link. I don't know how I got it to uh What if you shake yours? Phil? Yeah. No, it's the the, the radio still works. 
I think you have to be like either really, really far away or maybe like you have to shake it. Really shake it. We'll, we'll play around with these. We'll play around with these. We just more. got these in. We just got them in. But um, give them a, oh, do you want to go to the overhead again? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, you're going to give them a LiPo battery. They do have a LiPo charger, um, but they don't come with a battery, so it's easy to ship. But we stock all sorts of batteries, so you know any, any LiPo battery you stock will work just fine. And then um, there's example code um, on the DF Robot website for how to program this to make like different paired Bluetooth like syncing projects. Um, so you're, they come as a pair and you're kind of intended to sort of program them as a pair where one person gets one, one person gets the other, and then maybe you can like have them communicate with each other. And that's new product this week. Very beautiful. <laughs> Pardon me. Can I, a little, a little under the weather. Can, well, that was a uh, coughing uh, companion to Sorry. <laughs> the show. Uh, so if you, I made it through all yeah, the new products. If you want these, um, you can use the code. You should use the code. And you know, don't forget, you get free stuff too as you load up your cart. And that's how we uh, try to stay in business. Okay. So let's do questions. Uh, we don't have a top secret this week. We'll, no. we'll do top secret next week. Uh, I have a couple lined up. Hit me. All right, first question. I already got to the uh, Australia thing earlier. Uh, is there a difference between the PA16165 shown on the Ultimate JPS Breakout V3 all showed and the PA61, sorry, PA16160 like the Ultimate GPS module with That's S no breakout? That's D, I think, not. Gotcha. Okay. Got that so one? So the, the D um is is actually like dual band it does a couple different um radio systems whereas the s is actually the closest to the original um which only just does the american gps system so we we kind of revised the ultimate gps a little before the others so when we ordered it we're like oh yeah, let's just get the exact same thing because it's the s and it's drop and replaceable and like the same thickness and all that and then after that module we ordered like many thousands of them um, we went through and revised, you know, we got the D modules because we're like, oh, wait, there's one that supports more um, GNSS systems. So other products got revised with the D. The Ultimate GPS certainly currently has the S. The S is, again, the most compatible with the previous version with power and, and thickness. We will probably update the Ultimate GPS to do the, the dual band or whatever the D stands for. So it can do, like, I think Beidou, and it can do GLONASS. Um, the Russian and, and Chinese systems as mm -hmm. well, which is good because it's like, why, why depend on only American system when you can have um, Chinese or, or Russian um, options as well. Um, that said, they're basically the same chips. One's like the MTK333, one's one the MTK339. Okay. I have a fairly large VFD display that I managed to get working by following a very old data sheet. It runs on five volts, but I'm worried about driving and powering from my Arduino Micro if it's pulling too many amps. What's the worst thing that can happen? Brownout. Would there be any permit damage? How can I avoid this? Oh, it runs on five volts. I really think you should power it separately. VFDs are extremely power hungry. It probably needs like a two amp power supply. Okay. Uh, will Whippersnapper be opened up for the community to add boards? You can add to. boards now. In fact, somebody already ordered, uh, somebody already opened two PRs uh, for different ESP32 S2 boards. We're not supporting, we're not adding support for different chipsets yet. We are kind of are launching with only one chipset. Um, but if you have a board that uses that same chipset that we do and it's just like a pin configuration thing, you can add support. For components, there's no easy way because there's like back end support we have to add. So at this moment, there's no way to add other components. Um, if we do, we'll probably do for I squared C maybe, and there's still engineering work that has to be done. It's not like CircuitPython where it's like, add a board, here's the download, we're done, because there's backend stuff that has to match whatever the firmware's expecting. Yeah, and we'll probably uh, write up a guide on how to as we get going with it, but the reality uh, or destination is just like circuit Python.org, where we have like 300 boards in the download section. We, of course, and that's coming in from the community. There's more non Adafruit boards than Adafruit boards. But it took a while still. It did. Weekend. It we did. But, add that. but then once the momentum going. So yeah. we'll probably do that uh, similar thing with that. Um, and the good news is we don't run this as a startup uh, that has to have uh, like garbage user count that does that's not doing anything just to get funding. Uh, this is funded by your hardware purchases out there and just Adafruit in general. Yeah. So uh, I do want to have, I did make it so that people can add boards. Like we actually yeah. want it. 
I would just have to do it in a way that doesn't make it hard for the two person developer team or like one and a half person developer team yeah. um, from getting overwhelmed. So that's why it's like very basic right now. And, okay. and we're still like ironing out bugs. We want to get things a little more stable and then we'll have a tutorial on how to add boards. Next up, uh, what's the difference between ESP32 S2 and the ESP32 S2 uh, W Rover in like the Feather S2 and the ESP32 S2 is the Saloa Rover has Dev um, The kit. Rover has PS RAM. Okay. Is there a good way to end uh, Bluetooth on the NRF52 for the glasses driver board? In my situation, once the time gets updated via Bluetooth, I'd like to turn off advertising to save battery life. I don't know. Um, you know, you could just end the advertising or maybe set the advertising to like null or zero, try that. Um, if not, open up an issue in the library and, and TAC, who, who does the library support, will answer you. I don't know off the top of my head. All right. Uh, is Glasnot GPS the Russian version that you were talking about? Glonass. Glonass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, G L O N A S S. Yeah, is Beidou, Beidou is the Chinese system. And then there's, I think, a couple other systems that other countries are kind of putting together. Okay. Uh, would you offer the Seesaw Breakout ET Tiny 817 with headers already soldered on? Nope. Okay. Question I am new to PCB design. What vendor would you recommend for custom shape, small volume, custom PCBs? Um, for custom shape, I would do, it's tough because actually a lot of companies don't do custom shape. I would do um, JLC PCB. That's what I use for custom shape and they, they seem to cut the shape out the way I want. Sometimes they complain, but they, they tend to do it. Okay. Uh, how can I get the macro pad to register a held down key such as shift? Currently I have to lift up and re-push. Doesn't pursue it's using a, It's a good thing to sample. open an issue on the repo form. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think we've been asked that. So if it's, I, I'm sure it's possible. Um, open it up in the repo. And we'll take a look at it. Yeah, shift shift is a weird key cap, but also yeah. I don't know. Uh, where would be a good place to get a spool of the old school rainbow ribbon cable? I think DigiKey stocks it. It's not that old school. It's still being used. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the ESP32 S2, S3 is a uh, to be room. Room? Do, what, do people call it a room? Or do they say room? Yeah, uh, module variant that has extra flash and RAM. And let's see if there's any more. Do you not know why Espressif has stuff that's hard to pronounce? It's kind of cool, though. Like, at least it's unique. Yeah. All right. I think that's uh, that's everything. Okay. I think we got it. All right, sweet. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Uh, that's the questions. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Let me go and do a little bit of odds and ends here. Don't forget the code is Birches all the way up till 10 p.m. Oh, wait. I think there's one more question. Yeah. You know what? Going to do one more question because that's what we do. On the DigiKey Great Search, you point out extreme improvement in the 555 timer power consumption. Uh, do you see microcontrollers getting down to a few milliamps or less? Um, running? I don't think so. Most, most microcontrollers don't. Just the cores themselves run at, like, basically four to eight to 10 to 16 milliamps. But sleep modes, though, they do, they do seem to get quite good. Okay. But you'll have to pay for it. Uh, where can someone find microcontroller chips for SMD? Sam D21 at Mega 3. You can't really right now. <laughs> um, 32U4. You, can, you could check DigiKey for the part number, subscribe. You'll get them when they're available. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'll just repeat that. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Jesse May, who's... Oh, we'll do one more. Wait, can I get a straight ESP32 module at CircuitPython? Not yet, right? Can like, you use? Yes, you can use a module. You can use it, yeah, but I don't. we don't you'll ship. Just, you'll we just run out of RAM model, almost instantly. Yeah. Okay. Um, special thanks, Jesse May, behind the scenes in the Slack chat. Special thanks to everybody in the chats. Thanks for asking really good questions. Thanks to all the customers. Um, thanks for sticking with us for the last 18 months. Boy! It's been a journey, um, but I hope that you uh, see some of the good things happening here in New York City and more, and that it's possible to move forward together. Um, you can move fast alone, but further together, and I think we're going to go further together. We'll see everybody next week. Tomorrow, there's some shows. Friday, there's some shows. Sunday, there's a show. Uh, more cool. Pro we didn't have time to get everything done today, um, so there's more fun stuff ahead. There's something to do every day yes. around here. Okay. Never boring. This is an Adafruit show. Bing bong. Here's a moment of Zener. <laughs>